Welcome back, movie lovers. Story recaps here. Today, we're diving into a drama that is a powerful exploration of the human heart's capacity for both love and betrayal. It delved into the consequences of infidelity, the fragility of trust, and the intricate web of emotions that bind us. Story begins with Connie Sumner doing her dishes while her son Charlie is playing on the floor. Enter Edward Sumner, husband to Connie. He is a successful businessman and Connie is a full-time homemaker. The scene depicts typical events of any normal family. Connie is loving mother who cares deeply for her kids. Kid. She puts the beanie on her son even though he says that he looks like a dork. It is a windy day and we see Connie bidding her goodbyes to both Edward and Charlie as they leave. Edward suggests Connie should stay in, but she says that she can't as she has to go to the city and get the things for their son's birthday. From Edward's gesture, we gather that he and Connie share a sweet and loving relation. Next scene opens with Connie running through the streets amidst the squall. She manages to get the things, but the storm is giving her a real hard time. The winds are so severe that even no taxi is ready to go. Despite everything, she braves her way cutting through the winds, but she crashed into a stranger. After the crash, the man acts nobly and tries to get her taxi, but failed. Seeing that Connie had hurt herself after the fall, he invites her in his apartment to clean up. Considering the bad weather, Connie agreed. Little did she know that agreeing to the innocent invite, she agreed to enter into a world that would awaken something in her that she never knew existed. Connie follows the man, and as soon as she enters his apartment, she is surprised to see all the books. The mystery man introduces himself as Paul Martel, a book dealer. Paul directs her to the bathroom. Connie tends to her injuries while Paul is getting the tea ready. On returning, Connie asks if he had a phone. Paul pointed her towards it. When she was about to leave, Paul wanted to gift her a book. He directs her to the book and asks her to read a specific page from it. She was impressed, but she immediately leaves as she was already late. On returning, Connie is seen having fun with her son. Later, when Edward arrives, he asks if she was okay. To that, Connie said she was fine. She also mentions Paul and how he helped her in her crisis. Edward jokes about it by asking if he was good looking and the scene ends on a humorous note. It's nightfall and Edward has bought a new video recorder. He starts shooting, but Connie gets shy. They both get in the mood and were about to go for it. But unfortunately, Charlie calls out for Edward and he had to leave reluctantly. Next day, after she bids Charlie goodbye, she decides to check the book out that Paul gifted her. To her surprise, she found a slip falling out that had his number. She decides to go back to the city and thank him for his help. On reaching the subway, she calls Paul and he invites her again. On reaching there, Paul offers to take her coat while taking her coat. We sense a tension building between them when he touches her neck. Later, he offers her coffee, and we see that Connie is comfortable in his company. She leaves soon as she had other errands. We see Connie paying a surprise visit to Edward in his office. Edward is overjoyed and on asking about her purpose of visit, she does not mention about Paul, but tells that she was in an auction with Bob earlier. Connie's behavior gives us a hint that an affair was slowly brewing. Next day, she again goes to visit Paul, Paul had already put on very good music. Connie compliments his taste in music, to which he asked if she would like to dance. Connie agreed at once, without hesitation. They get really close and Paul makes his advances. Connie fights her instincts and says that it was a mistake, but gives in eventually. They end up making love passionately. On the other side, Edward crosses path with Bob and asks him about his meeting with Connie. Bob was confused and told that they never met. Edward was surprised, but he handles it gracefully. At night, Edward is working. Connie checks in to see when he will be going to bed. When Connie was about to leave, he asked her if she loved him. To the witch, she replied yes. But this question from Edward lets us know that suspicion had ignited in his mind about Connie cheating on him. The next few days, we see that Connie's affair with Paul becomes a daily event and they spend a lot of time together having fun and making love. Later one night, when Connie was taking a bath, Edward joins her. He is feeling passionate and tries to get intimate, but Connie did not reciprocate. That event just added fuel to his fire. He started getting convinced on his doubts. The next few days made him restless and one day he plans on taking action. In the meantime, Connie was keeping up with her affair with Paul. One night at dinner table Edwards breaks the news of a work tour. The news was bluff to make Connie feel that she was alone and could act freely. In the meantime, he hired a private investigator to gather evidence of Connie's infidelity. As predicted, Connie dolls herself up for Paul and they have a great time between going for movies and making love. Soon, she realizes that her affair was consuming her 
and she was getting neglectful towards other important aspects of her life, but little did she know that it was too late. Edward's private investigator had already gathered evidence and presented them to Edward. We see upset Connie making her way to the city to meet Paul on a day outside of their agreed day of meeting. She was devastated to see Paul with another girl. She loses it and demands to know about the girl, to which he say that she was just a friend. The argument gets heated up, but the anger of the dispute slowly turned into desperate passion, and they end up making love on the staircase. In the meantime, we see Edward has already reached Paul's apartment. We see Connie leaving hurriedly and Edward wandering in indecision, inches from each other. Edward braves his way to Paul's door and introduces himself as Connie's husband. Paul did not deny their affair, instead. He acts civil and welcomes Edward. Paul offers him a drink and they get to talking. Edward's motivation behind this was to learn why did Connie act the way she did. After talking for some time, Edward comes across a snow globe that he gifted Connie. He was heartbroken to see that Connie had given it away as a gift to Paul. This turned a switch in him, and he started hyperventilating. He gets up claiming that he was not feeling well, and suddenly struck Paul with the globe so hard that he bled to death. Edward soon comes to his senses and realizes the crime he had committed. He tried his best to cover it up. He even sneaked the body out of the apartment and dumped it in the junkyard. He cleaned himself up and went back home as if nothing had happened. Later one day, we see police inquiring Connie about a missing French book dealer. Connie suspected something was not right. Eventually, police discovered the body and informed the Sumners. Connie was devastated on hearing this, but she couldn't express it as that would raise a lot of questions. One day, when Connie was at a laundry, she was checking the pockets of Edward's coat before putting it in and came across the photos that the investigator took. She was afraid and ashamed to learn that Edward already knew about her. Later that night, she was shocked to see the snow globe that she gifted Paul back in her home. That gave it away that something sinister had happened and Edward was responsible for it. When she confronted him, Edward did not deny and admitted to everything. He admitted that it was an accident and was not what he intended. After the fateful night, when Edward was ready to give himself up to the police, Connie found a note that made her realize how much Edward loved her, and his action would affect their family in many ways, so she decided to be an accomplice and help Edward get away with it. Next scene we are shown that some time has passed, and they are living their life as agreed. They share a dance as if it was the last dance of their life. Later, they get in their car and start to drive. After a while, the car comes to a stop. The location is not shown right away. Connie and Edward express their love for each other and talk about fleeing the country and they hug. But suddenly, the camera zooms out slowly, revealing the location to be in front of a police station. And on that note, the movie ends. We are left on a cliffhanger with an open interpretation for its audience, which makes this movie even more unique and remarkable. And there you have it, the captivating story of Unfaithful. This movie takes us through Connie's tumultuous journey, filled with passion and regret, and it served as a stark reminder of the unpredictable and often devastating nature of love. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell for more exciting movie recaps.